Next, we have De Morgan's laws, which says that the inverse of A or B is nothing but the AND of A inverse and B inverse. And then similarly over here, the inverse of A and B is the OR of A inverse and B inverse. And you'll see that these rules are, are very useful as you start performing Boolean algebra. In terms of representations, we have these standard notations to represent the AND gate, the OR gate, and the NOT gate. So if you see a circuit like this, what does that mean? It's basically the input A, which is going through an inverter, then the input B, they're both being sent to an OR gate, and the result is being inverted again. So as a shorthand, the inverter gets replaced with a single circle. So this picture over here is equivalent to the, to the larger picture on the left, where the inverters have just been replaced with a single circle over here, right? So this corresponds to the Boolean algebra equation of A being inverted, and then being ORed with the value B, and the result itself is being inverted. And now if I apply De Morgan's laws, this is nothing but the AND of these two individual terms being inverted, right? So the inverse of A inverse would be A itself, and the inverse of the B term would be B bar, right? So you could have also expressed the same picture over here with an AND gate, where one of the inputs is B inverted and the other input is A. So this circuit over here is equivalent to this circuit over here. So let's go back to that same equation or that same logic block that we had before where the output was true if exactly two of the inputs was was true. Right? So how do I express that with a Boolean algebra equation? Right? So one way to do it is this term over here, which is fairly intuitive, which says that you know this output is true if one of the following cases is true. Right, either A and B are true, right? That's exactly two being being true, or B and C are the two that are that are true, or A and C are the two inputs that are true. If any one of these three conditions is true, then my output is going to be true. But unfortunately, this term by itself is also going to be true if A, B, and C are all true, and that's a case under which I should be producing an output of zero, right? So to handle that special case. I'm going to AND the result of this whole thing with one more special term over here, which says that if all three are true, then A ANDed with B ANDed with C is also going to be true. Let's take the opposite of that. That is going to give me a result of zero, right? So in the special case where all three are true, then this becomes a zero term which gets ANDed and produces the result zero. Under all other circumstances, this term is going to be a 1, so it basically can be ignored, right? Because you're anding something with 1, and that would just be the result of the first term. Okay, so this is one way to produce a Boolean algebra equation for the truth table that we saw before. A perhaps simpler and less error-prone way is to look at that truth table, right? So in that truth table, there were three terms which were 1. So I can basically say that if any one of those three conditions is true, then my output is going to be true, right? So it's the OR of three different conditions. And this first condition over here was basically saying that, you know, if A is 1, if B is 1, but C is 0. Now, how do I express that? I, I can express that as A ended with B ended with the inverse of C. So this term is only true under this one particular scenario over here. In all other scenarios, at least one of these three terms will end up being a 0. And so the result would be a zero. It's only under this particular combination that A, B, C bar is going to be true. Then similarly, I come up with a term for this row over here. So this refers to the case where A and C are true and B is not true. So A ended with C ended with B bar is going to be true only under this particular set of inputs. So one, zero, one. And in that case, I should produce a result of one. And then the third case, is down over here where C and B are 1 and A is 0, right? So it's only under this particular scenario that the third term will be true, right? So if you see one of these three cases, then you should produce an output of 1. Okay, so this is referred to as the sum of products representation. And similarly, you can also do a product of sums representation as well. So let's say that a certain truth table has 13 ones 
and three zeros, right? It would be a very complicated term to express each one of these, these 13 terms. So it's easier to express the three cases where you should have zeros, and that is better expressed with a product of sums. Now, it's also the case that this equation over here can be expanded to give you this result over here. Right? So let me just clear out the writing on this slide and show you how the first term is exactly the same as the second term. So essentially, if I use my distributive law, I can take this term over here and and it with each one of these terms individually. And so that would give me a dot b dot a dot b dot c bar. Right, I'm just going to take the first term over here and let's let's expand that. This is nothing but a dot b dot. Now I'm going to apply De Morgan's laws to convert this term into a bar plus b bar plus c bar. Okay, now I'm again going to apply the distributive law and that gives me a dot b dot a bar plus a dot b dot b bar plus a dot b dot c bar. Right? We know that this is going to be 0 because you're multiplying a times or you're taking the and of a and a bar. This term is also going to be 0 because you're taking the and of b and b bar. So only this term gets left out. Right? So basically, by multiplying this with this, I produce the term a dot b dot c bar. Similarly, if I take these two and and it with this, I get I get this term, I believe, and then likewise, if I take this term and add it, I get this term over here, right? So these two terms are indeed equivalent, and that's exactly what I'm kind of expanding on over here. So here's the truth table, here's the corresponding equation referred to as the product of sums, and similarly, you can also do the sum of products.